Greetings, students. Let's review how phosphorylation can change protein structure and function. So to understand this, the first thing we need to understand is what is phosphate? So phosphate is a common functional group, meaning it's just a common molecule we see um, in chemistry, and it's PO4 three minus. So it's a phosphorus with four oxygens. If we were to draw the structure, it would look like this. So you don't need to memorize this structure necessarily, but what you should remember are that all of these negative charges. So in other words, when you hear phosphate, which often we draw with just a P with a circle around it, when you hear phosphate, you should think negative charge, negative charge. So if we're adding phosphate to a protein, we are adding a bunch of negative charges to it. And that's gonna change how the protein folds, how it's shaped, and that's gonna change the protein's function. Let's look at an example. All right, so there are three players in our example here. Um, the first is the protein that's gonna become phosphorylated. In this example, it's an enzyme. And since it's an enzyme, I'm also gonna um, talk about its substrate. And then we also need a molecule of ATP. Um, what is not pictured here in this model is a kinase, which kinase is the enzyme that will actually phosphorylate this protein. Okay, so for now, let's just think about this enzyme. So in order for an enzyme to catalyze a reaction, it needs to be able to bind its substrate within its active site. So this here is the active site. As we can see now, the substrate is not able to get into the enzyme's active site. It's because the active site is not the right shape to let the substrate in. So this enzyme right now, we would think is turned off. It's non-functional. Okay, so let's imagine a kinase comes along. I guess my hand is gonna represent the kinase. And this kinase is going to take a phosphate group from ATP. See all these P's here? Those are phosphates. So the kinase is gonna take a phosphate off of ATP and add it onto this enzyme. This enzyme is now phosphorylated. This is phosphorylation. So what's really important is now this enzyme, we just added a bunch of negative charges onto that enzyme. Look at all that negative charge. And look, over here in the protein, there's an R group with a positive charge. Positives and negatives attract. So now this enzyme is actually going to be able to change its shape like so. So now we can see we have this positive charge and this negative charge are attracted to each other. Remember, this negative charge came from the phosphate. So because we have this new negative charge, now we can form a new ionic bond. And so this has changed the shape of the enzyme. Now, if the substrate comes along, ta-da, it fits in the active site. And so now the enzyme, it's able to act on the substrate, make the products, and that's only because the shape of the enzyme changed. In this case, when the shape of the enzyme changed, it changed the other molecules that the enzyme was able to interact with. In this case, now it's able to bind to the substrate and break it down. And in a nutshell, that is how phosphorylation is gonna change the function of an enzyme. So let's go ahead and summarize. How does phosphorylation change protein structure and function? So the key points here that we need to know is that phosphate, those phosphate groups, are negatively charged. So when a protein is phosphorylated, that means it's going to add new negative charges onto the protein. And so now because we have these new negative charges, that's gonna change the types of interactions that the protein can have with itself. In this example, we can have a new ionic bond form. That is going to change how the protein is folded, which changes its three-dimensional shape, which is gonna change its function, change how it works.
Great. And then a couple other key points before we go. So one, the enzyme that adds phosphates, the enzyme that does phosphorylation is called a kinase. So kinases add phosphates. And then the enzyme that removes phosphates is called a phosphatase. So they are opposites. Kinase add, phosphatates remove. And then finally, the other key thing to keep in mind is that phosphorylation can activate or inhibit a protein. It just depends on the protein we are talking about. So phosphorylation can activate or inhibit. This is a common misconception that phosphorylation only activates, but it can do either. It's just gonna depend on the specific protein that we're talking about. All right, and there we go. Now you understand why phosphorylation changes protein structure and function.